Hi, David Elsey here, licensed and international instructor of the Sedona Method. In this video, I'm going to share with you an overview of what the Sedona Method is, also some detailed approaches within the Sedona Method, and if you are a veteran of the Sedona Method, I'm sure you will still be inspired and learn some things you didn't know. By the end of this video, I'm also going to give you a direct experience of the entrance point of the Sedona Method. So let's get started. Lester Levinson was told to go home to his penthouse apartment overlooking Central Park and wait for the end. In that period of time that he was being self-reflective, he looked at his life and he saw a lot of repressed emotion. And in the process of the next three months, he began to let go of or switch from hating to love. He experimented with ways of processing the repressed emotion to the point where at the end of the three months, he had a sense of total healing and he walked, as the story goes, for three days throughout Manhattan because he had released so much life force within his body that had been repressed. So he got a sense of, more important than even that, his unlimited nature. And so for the next many number of years, he shared with people directly that they too, their nature was this unlimited beingness, this unlimited presence of life, this force that permeates all that is. But obviously, the mind gets very active and people would be interested and say, wow, that sounds great. But what about, and the mind would kick in. So after a number of years, he had moved to Sedona, Arizona, and he began through discussions to figure out that this fixed sense of a limited me was being kept in place by a misunderstanding of separation from all, from the infinite, from this force of life that is actually permeating and creating our very existence. And the sense of separation wanted to stay safe and secure, and it developed wants to control around it, to control its safety, wanted to get love and approval to be safe and secure, you see? And to the structure was based on fundamentally the flaw of a misunderstanding of our separation and what keeps that in place but this perception of lacking. And so Lester looked at all emotional the spectrum as being fundamentally sourced in this perception of lack. And if you let go at the lower perceptions of lack, you then have the possibility of the waves of emotionality set, beginning to settle and you beginning to rest more in the center of the ocean of your being. And so the letting go of the sense of lack is the fundamental approach of the Sedona Method. Now, without teaching you and taking the full weekend course time here on the video, just understand that the wanting, the sense of lacking, is the perpetuating force behind our emotional pain. If in the moment, in this nanosecond of now, we can let go for a moment of a perception of wanting to be in control of something or wanting to be more safe or secure, wanting love, just in this nanosecond of eternity, this little window, once that rests and you let go of that for a second, what's revealed is the truth of presence which has always been permeating this very moment, the presence which is unbound by conditioning of childhood, childhood or life experiences. So the letting go reveals the free nature of your beingness. That's the foundation of the Sedona Method, which he began in 1974. And since then, Hale Dwoskin in, in the mid-1990s continued Lester's work because Lester died in 96. And Hale Dwoskin continued the work. And as we began to, and I studied in 1987, I've been trained since 1996 to be a licensed instructor of the Sedona Method. So my coaching of individual clients and my teaching of the course, fundamental and advanced courses, is grounded in this understanding that who we truly are is unlimited in our nature. And it's letting go or, and this is the next part of what I wanna share with you in this video, the Sedona Method fundamentally looks at letting go of misunderstanding about who we are. But also, it has been what Lester did in the first 20 years of his life after waking up to his true nature. He invited us to understand this fundamental question 
or investigate who am I? Who, what, are you? If you're not your mind and not your thinking, who and what is this in infinite presence which permeates the now in this moment? And so his first teachings were basically pure self-inquiry. He read Ramana Maharshi and, and, and Nisagar, uh, not Nisagardata, but Yogananda. And he was looking at others who had already been exploring this. And fundamentally, he saw they were asking the same question that he perceived to be the most fundamental question. Who am I? What is this I am? Not I am this or that, but the I am presence. So the Sedona method began to take on both this fundamental sense of a me letting go, and it made its way into who and what is here in which the humanness and our emotions are arising, and of which they are made. So the techniques of the Sedona Method go like this, and I'm just going to name them in short. The first is letting go of the misunderstanding of the lack that we feel. It's called just letting go. We also include welcoming, because the only thing that can actually welcome what's rising is the unbound and infinite presence itself. And so in that experience of welcoming, we remember our unbound nature. There's also holistic releasing, which acknowledges that this universe is, is based fundamentally on opposites. In other words, comparative existence. In the Tao, it's called yin and yang. There's one single circle, unending and without an opening. But within that is this mixture, the yin and yang with both white and black within the black and white. This is, in, in Buddhism, it's called the interdependent co-arising, or the co-origination. Everything is original only by its interrelationship with what's around it and other elements. So holistic releasing looks at opposites. For instance, you don't know what up is without you having coexisting in your consciousness what down is. So I can say up, but it comes with down, even though I'm not looking at the word down. Hot comes with its opposite, cold. So what we do in holistic releasing is you relax back into that in which they both appear and allow both alternatingly until there's a point where they soften in opposition and there's this softening into a coexistence and then a falling back into the entirety of who you are that can allow for opposites. The you that's unbound or def not defined by either. That's holistic releasing. And by the way, I have YouTube videos that explain the fifth way, which I'm about to get to. And I'll be adding more videos along this path in my YouTube channel. Right now, there is one about explaining the four ways and the fifth way, and I'll be adding more. So keep your eyes open. Be sure to subscribe so you're informed of them. So welcoming, letting go, uh, holistic releasing, diving in where you dive beneath layers and layers of thought emotion, memory, sensation, imagery, until you experience the empty presence and the fullness of your beingness, which is here beneath and which permeates all layers of your existence. There's also the fifth way, which begins to turn our attention from that which we're letting go of to that which is aware of what's rising. And it's a series of, it's based on the principle of triple welcoming. And that's based on the idea of, can you welcome all the sensorial experience and thoughts and stories and memories? Can you also welcome your wanting to do anything about it, wanting to change it, alter it, fight it, fix it? And then can you notice how it creates, that storyline creates a persona, a sense of a me. It's personal or about a me or who I am. And it can continue until there's a sense of awareness resting in which that came and went, but isn't defined by what's rising and falling, resting in and as awareness. The, the next way is called the freeway, and it's the most recent exploration of having a sense for you of what the unbound is. Unbound meaning God, spirit, soul, consciousness, awareness. The word is unimportant. Whatever resonates for you in that state, that sense, that open glimpse, 
of unbound living. And then, how does that see this issue? How does unbound beingness see this pain or this story that I've been telling myself? How does infinity, for me it's infinity, how does infinity see this problem I think I have? And then I automatically smile, this was real. When I think about any problem, how does infinity see the coronavirus? How does infinity see the struggles we're going through? So it doesn't mean that you don't have a sense of compassion for everything. It just means there is this sense of largeness which has room to handle it. As Pema Chodron says, our task is to be to find room in which all this happens. So those are the ways of releasing or seeing the truth of who we are. So what I'm going to do now to finish this video is I'm going to share with you the entrance point, the foundation that the Sedona Method was created by. So it goes like this. Since empty, infinite potentiality, whether you're talking about quantum physics or spirituality, is permeating and the substance of my very being, if you break this down, you go into empty space between the subatomic particles that I'm made of. And so, if you allow the possibility that you are or have the power of the universe, what I want you to do right now is, first and foremost, I'd like you to bring up for yourself something that's bothering you, a story. It could be, if, if you're watching this still during the coronavirus, it could be about that, survival, family, friends, and the loneliness of self-sheltering or isolation or if you contracted the virus, or if this is later beyond the virus on the, on the landscape of humanity, and you're dealing with something in your life about finances or family or health, what I'd like you to do right now is think about that, focus on that just for a moment, and the emotion that it brings up, what is that? Is it anger, fear, sadness, anxiety? Whatever that is, I'm going to ask you three fundamental questions. If you had or were the power of the universe in this moment, could you let that feeling or that story go? Did you hear the premise? If you were the infinite or all-powerful of the universe, could you allow that story or feeling to release or be seen through for a moment? You don't have to do it right now. Do you understand? I'm not requesting that you act like something suddenly doesn't exist. I'm just saying the premise is if you had and were the, the infinite of the universe, could you let that story or emotion go? Would you consider being free of that story or that emotion? If you could, would you consider in this moment that you're watching this video, would you consider being free of that, would you consider letting it go? And the final question is, when are you interested in experiencing freedom from that? Tomorrow, a layaway plan for six months? You want to defend and protect it and explain it and justify why they're suffering here? This is not denial or spiritual bypassing. It's just in this moment. When would you be open to feeling freer? I'm going to ask this again. If you had the power of the universe, if you were and are the power of the universe, could you, in this moment, let that feeling or that story you're replicating in your mind go? Would you allow it to release? Could you allow it? Would you consider being free of it, letting it go just for now? When would you be open to feeling freer from it? When would you be open to letting it go, letting go of holding on to it so tightly? 
I'll ask one more time. Could you, if you had the power of the universe and were the power of the universe, could you allow this story to be seen through or allowed to relax or, in this moment, let it go? Just could you? Would you consider letting it go? When? And the last time, could you consider letting go of this story or emotion? Would you consider it? When? Now, take a gentle breath in through the nose. Hold it just for three seconds. And let go. Breathing is not an essential component of the Sedona Method, but it is an essential component for health and well-being. So just check right now when you revisit that issue. See if it's any quieter or calmer. Fundamentally, it's could you let it go? Would you consider it? Consider being free? And when? So that's just an entrance point. Sometimes it's enough. But otherwise, you can look at these other ways of letting go, the techniques I outlined. If you're interested in learning the Sedona Method, the fundamentals of it, there is a website, sedona.com, in which Hale has a number of products produced for the releasing. There will be a product in the year 2020 that I come out with called Awaken Life 2.0. So please subscribe to this channel and, and stay in touch. Get on my mailing list on my website. And when that comes out, I'll include the Sedona Method in it, plus the depth of pure self-inquiry and the power of pranayama or the breathing which re-energizes and strengthens the body within 60 seconds or 120 seconds, strengthens your calm nervous system, your parasympathetic nervous system of rest and regeneration. So I combine those and the power of silence, and that will be my course. In the meantime, please know that there are other videos on my website, on this, uh, on this YouTube channel regarding the Sedona Method, and others, how to live life as consciousness. And I do a lot of movement to demonstrate those ways of perceiving what the body is, what the invisible is coming into the visible, and how we can let go and also see through our perceptions of identifying only with the body and only with the experiences to reveal a deep and profound sense of calm and compassion for our humanness, compassion for the emotions we feel the kindness and love that we've been seeking externally for our entire life, we find within. So this is my great joy. I've been doing this, as I said, since 1987 myself. And it's my great joy to support you. So I hope you watch others of my video. Please do subscribe. And until I see you in the next video, I wish you peace.